Liberal leader Justin Trudeau tried to focus on policy today with an announcement on guns. Trudeau says his government would ban semi-automatic assault weapons and allow for municipalities to regulate handguns. Thoughts and prayers are just not going to cut it. The choice could not be clearer. Liberals are for tougher gun laws. Conservatives are for weaker gun laws. So how exactly would the Liberals' plan work? Bill Blair is the Liberal candidate for Scarborough Southwest and formerly the Toronto's, Toronto's chief of police, rather. He joins us from Toronto. Hi, Mr. Blair. Nice to see uh, you. Thanks for uh, making time. Hi, Vashi. Good to be here. Did you make the decision, sir, not to propose an outright handgun ban because of political calculations? Were you worried that it would lose your party votes in rural areas of this country? Absolutely not. I have to tell you, I'm motivated only by keeping people safe, and that's the discussion I had with my party and with my prime minister. And, and we looked at measures on, on, first of all, we looked at how guns get in the hands of people to commit violent crimes with them. And we've, I've proposed, and, and we are introducing in our platform today, very significant new measures. The three ways in which guns get into the hands of criminals are smuggled across the border. We brought new measures in and new resources to, to, to close off that supply of guns. We also know that many of the guns are being stolen from, from lawful gun owners who haven't done enough to keep their weapons secure. And so we're bringing in new regulations that will apply coast to coast. To, to require those weapons to be stored far more securely in a safe or a vault. And finally, we're bringing forward additional message, uh, measures because some of those guns are being purchased legally and then sold illegally for an enormous profit by, by people who are, are profiting from gun trafficking. And so we are taking very significant measures to, to interdict the supply of guns going into the hands of criminals. And as well, there are a number of weapons that were designed not for hunting, not for sports shooting, but only for military use. They were designed for soldiers to kill other soldiers. They're exceptionally efficient at, at, at taking of life. And, and we have seen these are the weapons of choice for the, the shooter in, in, in Quebec City at the mosque, at the Ecole Polytechnique, at, at, at Christchurch, and at Sandy Hook, where so many little kids were killed. And, and, so, and so there is no place in a civil, safe civil society for weapons that were designed for the efficient killing of people. And so we are going to initiate a ban of those assault rifles. There are close to a quarter of a million of them currently in Canada. I understand that, Mr. Blair, and I want to ask you about that ban in a moment, but I was, I was just asking, you know, is, am I to interpret from what you've just said that an outright ban on handguns, your party feels, would not be effective in combating the, the problem right now? You know, one of the things the Prime Minister asked me to do is, is to look at measures that would make our country safer, to interdict the supply going into the hands of criminals, and to do it in a way which is respectful of those lawful firearm owners across the country who are, in fact, responsible in, the, in their use. They, they store them securely. They're the responsible in their use. And, and, and I went and met with them and listened to them. And, and frankly, if they obey our laws, if they, are, if they are very conscientious in the storage of their weapons so that they don't hand, end up in the hands of criminals, we don't intend. There's nothing in our platform today that is intended to interfere with the legitimate lawful activities of hunting and sports shooting in Canada. But for, but for owners of handguns, we're going to ask them to secure them better in a, in a safer vault so that they're not subject to being stolen. We also are going to make sure that we have the tools in place to prevent straw purchase, that's the illegal diversion of guns, and new measures to keep them from coming across the border. We also know that in some, in some locales, such as the City of Toronto, in which I've spoken to the Mayor, they have some additional concerns, and so they, they've asked for consideration of regulations that would enable them to not only adhere to the same standard of, of s secure storage that will apply right across Canada, but perhaps some additional measures that will enable them to say where and if a firearm can be stored within their locale and how it and, and where it can be used. In and, order and to so do that, though, sorry, pardon me, pardon the interruption, in order to do that, cities would need the cooperation of provinces. In Toronto's case, Premier Doug Ford has already explicitly said he opposes any type of handgun ban, uh, a handgun ban, rather. So, so what actually does what you're proposing do for the city of Toronto? And, and the Prime Minister was very clear today, we're prepared to work directly with municipalities. Um, how can frankly, you supersede I, I, the province's jurisdiction when it comes to and, and, the laws and, and, of a municipality? Well, and, and, and quite frankly, there is a, a regulatory jurisdiction of the municipality, and we're going to work with those municipalities and find ways to keep their citizens safe. You know, I believe all three orders of government have a responsibility here. What we have found with the Conservatives is, is it's very difficult for them to talk about guns because they are so beholden to the gun lobby. Like Mr. Shears talk, talks about gang safety, but you'll notice he can 
can never speak about any kind of measure that will make it more difficult for those gangs to get guns. With, with respect, we're prepared though, I'm to act. We're prepared to act on ensuring that those guns are not easily accessible to people who would commit violent crimes. And I'm questioning what you're proposing to do, though, with respect. Not, you know, I, though, there should be many, plenty of questions for Mr. Shearer and what he says as well. But in this case, your party is making very specific promises, and one of them is the that you would somehow facilitate a way for cities to uh, ban guns themselves, except for, I don't understand how, what you're saying, how how can that be if the province, like, how are you going to supersede provincial jurisdiction here? Well, and, and, and let's talk about jurisdiction. First of all, it is a federal jurisdiction to, to determine uh, storage requirements for handguns un, under our firearm regulations, and, and we propose that for handguns. They, they will have to be stored, not as currently is the case in a, in a locked, non-transparent container or a locked room, but in fact, in a safe or a vault. And I'll tell you that the vast majority of really conscientious firearm owners, handgun owners that I've spoken to are very, very conscientious about the storage of their weapons. But unfortunately, not everybody is. We've seen tragedies where guns have been stolen from private homes and from retailers. And in fact, the gun that was, was used in, the, in that tragic Danford shooting last summer in the city of Toronto was stolen from a gun retailer in Saskatchewan. And, and if that gun had been secured in a vault, that gun would not have been available on the streets of Toronto. Mr. And Blair, though, you're not addressing my question. I, I, take your, I take your point on the jurisdiction that you do have, but yep. in the promise that specifically has to do, because we know that this is a lot of this stems from what Toronto wants, right? Mayor Tory has asked for a handgun ban. Your party has responded by saying, we'll give you the ability to do that, but as a municipality. I'm simply asking, how are you going to do that without provincial cooperation? We will work directly with the province of, in, in, or with the city and the municipalities. And I, I also want to work with, with provinces and territories but if you've got someone like Mayor Ford who wants no part of this, then we're going to work directly with the city because we have a responsibility to keep citizens safe. And so we'll work with the City of Toronto and if they wish to pass additional regulations that would define where a firearm could be stored or even used within their municipality, we're going to find a way to make that happen because... How are you going to do it, that? It, Change it, the laws? Like, what? I don't understand that right now the province has to cooperate in order for that to happen. Well, ideally the province would cooperate, but if they're not going to cooperate, then we're going to do what is necessary to keep Canadians safe and to keep our city safe. The violence that has been taking place not just in Toronto but in municipalities and towns and villages right across this country is unacceptable to us. And we're going to take the steps necessary to interdict the supply of guns going into the hands of criminals and we're taking additional measures as well. What you heard about today is, is, is firearm control measures that are going to make it far more difficult for a criminal to get a gun. But we'll also be coming forward in, 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 the, in the coming weeks with, with significant additional measures to deal effectively with the gangs responsible for, for, for this violence and we're also introducing even today new, new, new regulations with respect to what we call red flag laws so if you've got a firearm in a dangerous situation that creates a deadly situation and so we want to make sure that the police but also victims teachers doctors have the authority they need in a dangerous situation of domestic violence of intimate partner violence or where someone is suicidal or if somebody's online advocating hate and violence against a, a religious minority or LGBT members or women or anyone that's a red flag. So and we want to be able to take guns out of that situation by suspending their okay. ability to acquire those guns and, and give the police the authority to seize those weapons. Mr. Blair, say you can, as you say, override the province. Uh, how will this work? How will a city-by-city -city ban work? Imagine Toronto has a ban, but you know that city as well as I do. Mississauga and Scarborough decide against it, or Mississauga and Oakville decide against it. Do you walk into one and you, you can't hold a gun, but you can walk into the other? Like, is that actually... Do you have any evidence to show that that proposal would actually be effective in combating violence with guns? What, we, what will definitely be effective is introducing new regulations, which we propose to do so that every handgun in Canada, regardless of what jurisdiction, will now have to be stored in a safe but or I'm a I'm asking you about your proposal where cities are concerned. You're answering a question about something else, sir, and with if, and, and if the, no, first of all, that, that one measure will be, will have a very significant impact in the availability of guns to be stolen and then end up on the streets of any community. But in addition to that, you know, there are certain circumstances in cities that, that also need to be addressed. And, and if, if they wish to pass regulation, for example, that says a firearm cannot be stored within their locale, or whether or not ranges, where is the only legal place in which these guns can be shot, 
um, w would be located within the municipality. We're going to work with the municipality to give them that ability to do that. And, 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 but, but the measures that we propose for the whole, whole country will make a significant difference in making it more difficult for those guns to be stolen and end up in the hands of criminals. And we'll work with municipalities to deal with the unique circumstances that they're facing and the challenges they're facing uh, to, to empower them to take the steps that they believe necessary to keep their community safe. Before I let you go, Mr. Blair, one question on the timing of this announcement. Was it always planned to be released today or was this an effort by your party to turn the page away from the controversy involving those photos of Mr. Trudeau in blackface? Vashi, the Prime Minister asked me to start working on this over a year ago. I've done consultations right across the country. Um, we have been working on bringing these measures forward. We have a responsibility to bring before Canadians our platform, uh, clear plans on what we're going to do to address their very serious concerns about gun violence in their communities right across Canada. Um, our plan was always to bring forward that platform. Today we brought forward a significant portion of it. There's more to come and, and I look forward to the opportunity to continue the discussion with Canadians about about the plans of, of, of our Liberal government to, to keep Canadians safe. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Blair. Appreciate thank your you. time today. That's Liberal candidate Bill Blair. Conservative leader Andrew Scheer was, of course, asked about the Liberals' plans for gun control. Here's his response. Our plan goes after the real criminals. We're going after the illegal farms. We're standing up for honest Canadians, farmers and hunters, people who use firearms responsibly and legally. It's easy to ask law-abiding Canadians to follow more laws. It's harder to go after the criminals and the illegal firearms. Conservatives are ready to do the hard work that will actually improve safety in our communities. Conservatives say they are against any outright handgun ban. They're proposing lifetime ban though, bans rather, though, for those convicted of violent crimes or gang activity. The Conservatives have also promised more money for police. The New Democrats, like the Liberals, say cities should have the power to ban handguns. The party also wants to crack down on illegal weapons and gun smuggling. The Green Party wants both a handgun and an assault rifle ban. They would permit handguns if, quote, restricted to secure shooting ranges. It won't be as effective as a national handgun ban, which is what I have called for. It is what the Toronto City Council has called for. It's what a number of other cities across Canada have called for. It's what doctors who treat people in emergency rooms have called for. Uh, but again, it is a step in the right direction towards tougher gun control. I believe tougher gun control is going to help us to save lives in Toronto and elsewhere in the country. That was Toronto Mayor John Tory reacting to the Liberals' proposed solution to combat gun violence. Liberal leader Justin Trudeau stopped short of promising a national ban on handguns. Instead, he said his government would ban semi-automatic assault weapons and allow for municipalities to regulate handguns. So, is that what victims of this kind of violence want to see? Ken Price is the father of Samantha Price, a survivor of the Danforth shooting. He's now a member of Danforth Families for Safe Communities and joins us from Toronto. Hi, Mr. Price. Nice to see you again. Thanks for coming back on the show. Hi, Vashi. Thank you for having me. Let me ask you for your initial reaction to what was proposed today uh, by the party, by the Liberal Party. They are proposing the, um, the ban on assault rifles, but where handguns are concerned, they seem to say, say that they, they will allow for, and, and the, the details of this are a little difficult to understand, but they will allow for cities to regulate that on their own. Your, your initial impression? Well, I think, first of all, I'm glad to see that they framed that there still is an issue because, they, you know, Bill C-71 passed, which is helpful, but clearly statistics show that we still have a problem and living in the city or in, elsewhere in the country, I think everyone feels affected by, you know, gun violence. And this is an election issue we should carefully consider. That I think in terms of the policy that was proposed, we're, of course, we're happy to see that the most deadly weapons uh, around assault rifles are going to be something that comes out of private hands. We had asked for that, and it's happening. A number of groups have asked for that for a long time, so that's good to see. But, you know, in, in terms of our specific case, we did want to see handguns uh, banned at a federal level, and so this has come short of that. Um, I, I think I would have to echo what Mayor Tory said. It, it's helpful, but I'm not sure what the inner workings are going to be that will make that effective. I think we'd have to see what the particular, um, the, the practicality of it is in terms of whether it works. Um, but it's, it's not what we asked for, it's, but it does at least start to talk about the issue we've been raising. For sure. It's, it's my understanding that if cities did want to go about doing that, that they would need to uh, have the, essentially the province's permission. We know that Premier Doug Ford has said that he doesn't endorse a handgun ban. At least he said that in August. I'm wondering what you think of uh, sort of that, that situation. 
Well, I think even if you had a federal law, you would still need cooperation at all levels of government to make it effective, and that's what we expect. You know, I'm a citizen of Toronto, of Ontario, and of Canada. This is an issue that affects us. This affected our family. It affects a lot of families. I expect cooperation across all levels of government. I would have hoped the federal government would have just pushed a little harder to set the tone and then look to work on cooperation with the provinces and the cities. That's the model that we would have preferred. What's your level of optimism about what kinds of proposals you'll hear from other political parties in this election? Well, I think the Green Party has come out and said um, that they would support an assault rifle and handgun ban that's in their platform. They don't talk about it very much. Um, I think the NDP has been less clear. I think the Conservatives have, have sort of defended the status quo, which is really about reaction to crime rather than prevention of crime. Let me ask you about, uh, and, and, and stop me if it's, it's not what you want to answer, but... but uh, the the I guess the the political nature of of this. Well, I know your family has felt this obviously very acutely, but uh, there is always debate when this is talked about about uh, the electoral sort of fortunes of a party in rural areas versus urban areas and how who they're playing to and what. And I'm just wondering if you think that is a factor in uh, the way in which these policies in, uh, get promised or or you know the content of those promises. Well, I think in, we're in election speak, so I think you're going to see this framed in as, you know, in as partisan a way as possible, which is really unfortunate because not to be glib about it, but bullets know no parties. And I think even if you looked at the families affected on, on the Danforth, I'm sure we're not all of the same political spectrum, but we are sure are united around this. And I would hope that in a nonpartisan way that all of the parties would say we need to do more to prevent the kinds of things that have happened on the Danforth and elsewhere since then. Um, and make, you know, make the country safe for all citizens, regardless of how they vote. Mr. Blair seemed to be making the point that an outright handgun ban wouldn't be effective, that the reason they decided to go against it was because the evidence showed them that attacking the supply, especially the storage of them, and intercepting at the border, that, that those sorts of issues uh, would be, and I, I'm paraphrasing, but would be more mm -hmm. effective than an outright ban. What, what do you think about that? Well, I think that all three, there are a number of things that have to happen, and certainly illegal guns is a problem, but legal guns and the availability of legal guns is, is an issue. That's what happened in our case. You know, we had a, a gun, you know, being marketed by a legitimate retailer, and, they, and there was a theft, and the theft ended up in the wrong hands. You know, I mean, if you're going to have a broad-based ownership gun policy, which is what we have now, then you're going to have mistakes. And unfortunately, those mistakes, uh, you know, cost us in, in, in tremendously terrible ways. We lose lives. We, uh, lives are affected forever. So the cost of that to us does not seem worth the risk. We need to have more restriction around the legal gun channel as well as uh, addressing illegal guns. Before I let you go, I'm sure our viewers are interested to know, how, how, are, how is your family doing? Well, we're lucky. I mean, Samantha is a tough, fierce, brave kid, and she's off to West. I shouldn't call her a kid. You know, I'm a dad. <laughs> she's 19. We're and, all kids to our dads. Yeah, she's now can legally drink, so what can you do? Anyway, so <laughs> there she is at Western, and she's doing well, and I'm happy about that. You know, I, I can say that not all of the families feel that way and, and are able to recover this way. I think one of the families said it really poignantly, you know, the shock is starting to wear off, and now the pain sets in. Like, this is something we deal with forever, and uh, so we're asking that people borrow from that experience without having to go through that themselves and, and support what we're asking for. Okay, I'll leave it there. I really appreciate you making time for us tonight, Mr. Price. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Bashi. It's Ken Price of the Danforth Families for Safe Communities in Toronto. In 2017, there were 2,500 more victims of gun violence in Canada than in 2013. 2,500. The Conservative leader looks at those numbers and still thinks it should be easier for people to buy a gun. He has vowed to gut Canada's gun control law. He wants to loosen restrictions on assault weapons. That's a ridiculous accusation made by a Prime Minister who's mired in his own scandal and desperate to change the channel. Uh, our plan goes after the real criminals. We're going after the illegal firearms. We're standing up for honest Canadians farmers and hunters, people who use firearms responsibly and legally. It's easy to ask law-abiding Canadians to follow more laws. It's harder to go after the criminals and the illegal firearms. We often talk about so-called wedge issues in a campaign, and that one, gun control, as they were talking about, is one of those issues. Today, the Liberal Party said it would work to allow cities to impose handgun bans, and they would ban 
across the country's semi-automatic assault weapons. Welcome back to Power and Politics and the Power Panel with Vicki, Andre, Marty, and Marie. Marie, I'll start with you. Uh, what's your initial impression of the uh, proposal? Well, it seems like they were ambitious on one part and not so much on the other, maybe. Uh, it, it's hard to understand why one of those bans would be national and the other one would be kind of a Swiss cheese optional voluntary ban on handguns, uh, which I think would make things very difficult for many reasons. I think the the, the military style, as they're calling it, uh, semi-automatic assault weapons, uh, seems to be well uh, received. Uh, that being said, we don't know which guns would qualify and kind of, because there is no Different. there is no definition of assault weapon in the firearms law right now. We don't really know what they're talking about. And then on the handgun, I mean, these cities, which asked for it, Toronto, Montreal, still need the province's approval. Well, in Toronto, Doug Ford has said that he doesn't agree with the handgun ban. And in Quebec, the CAC government has just tabled a bill to soften or loosen, if I can say, the registry that they're bringing in to replace the federal registry. So all that to say, it seems unlikely that the province, the provincial government where the cities have asked for this is actually going to go for it. And even if they did, then how does it work? You're, I was talking to a, 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 a pro-gun control uh, defendant or, or advocate. Ad advocate, thank you, today, who was saying, okay, but if you ban guns in Toronto, you can still go to Markham or, or, or Richmond Hill or anywhere close by to get a gun. And the argument they're making is that, yes, uh, lawful gun owners are, uh, there's plenty of lawful gun owners and they respect the law, but there are some who don't respect the law, like uh, Alexandre Bissonnette in Quebec had a legal arm purchased legally, or Justin Bourque in New Brunswick had a lawful gun purchased legally, but acted in an illegal way. Or you have guns that get stolen from the legal market and get diverted to illegal market, like Danforth, where that tragedy happened and you were talking to that father. So it, I... I, it's a nice sentiment, I guess, but I think they're going to be accused of falling short on the handgun part of this because it's really not what people were asking for. And if someone was telling me, if they're going to do it this way, then just don't do anything at all. Uh, Andrea, I asked Bill Blair off the top of the show about that issue with the province because particularly what Marie is referring to is Premier Ford has said that he opposes uh, a handgun ban. And Mr. Blair said that essentially they could they could supersede the province, they could work directly with the municipalities, but provided no details about how that would happen. Uh, what do you think of what the Liberals are proposing? Uh, it's a possibility, but I have to take the, uh, just to uh, get back to the point on the, uh, the trafficking. You know, the reason that you hear about uh, Chicago so much in American conversations about gun violence is Chicago actually does have a handgun ban. But the thing is, guns don't simply propagate out of thin air. They're moved into, into municipalities from other places. So when a city like Chicago, which does have a handgun ban, is surrounded by municipalities and states that don't, mm -hmm. then stolen weapons from legal gun owners end up getting trafficked into that city. And that's the exact same scenario that we're looking at here. If the federal government is only looking at municipal handgun bans, so if it's on a city-by-city -city basis, then people who are legal gun owners uh, you know, and, and, and intend to use their, their, their guns responsibly, if they're stolen from them, then they end up in the hands of people that shouldn't have them. So, you know, if you're going to talk about a uh, municipal ban, then we should be talking about a blanket ban. And if that's not politically viable, then why talk about it at all? And to, to the uh, the point yeah. about military-style weapons, you know, uh, the, our, our municipal sensibilities, I don't think, necessarily work out for, for people in rural communities, especially people who are, you know, if, if uh, you have to, you know, uh, kill actual <laughs> feral hogs that show up on your property, that is a reality for people who live in rural areas. If uh, you are a hunter, uh, is the weapon that you purchase legally and possibly keep in a uh, locked location at a club, is that going to be made illegal? Like, I'm not saying that we can't explore the possibility, but we have to be a little bit more specific than what we got today. Vicky, what do you think of the, uh, of the idea of going city by city? I think this, uh, for the Liberals, exploits a particular wedge issue, which is that their supporters like the idea of a handgun ban or assault weapons ban. You know, it's something that's bandied around the United States where it's seemingly a political impossibility, and it's something that New Zealand has done, but they've also instituted and put in a $141 million buyback on their guns and their weapons. Australia did the same uh, a couple decades ago, and the United Kingdom did so in the 1980s. I'm not seeing that level of effort. 
Also, unlike those other places I mentioned, they haven't built the political will. Gun owners are doubling down. Gun owners who are fairly reasonable, who accept the con you know the constraints of the law, they accept all the processes that they have to go through, and they now feel under siege. And I don't think they built the political will to say, you know, the the conditions that you get that allow you to own a gun are also the same conditions that allow people who are you know either facing particular personal challenges or people who have ill will to use guns and, and acquire them. I don't think they've built that capital with a broad swath of people. I think various city mayors, especially in central Canada, have got that, have got some of that, but I don't think they've built it out across the rest of the country. And that's, to me, this is what makes it a heavily politicized concern rather than one of policy. Yeah, that's an excellent that's exactly point it. because, Marty, you know, I, I remember as we were reporting on, they, they did a number of months of consultation on how to combat gun violence, prompted initially by uh, the mayors of Montreal and Toronto asking for an outright ban. And, and they, uh, we know there was a ton of reporting at the time about the disagreements within caucus, for, mm -hmm. for example, between rural MPs That's and right. urban MPs and how rural MPs were very concerned about how an outright ban would, the message it would send to, to their constituents. That's exactly it. So that just to talk specifically about the handgun ban, it is a way for the liberals to sort of sound like they're being really big on it without without necessarily damaging their reputation uh, in more rural areas. Uh, the clips that you played at, the, played at the top of the segment basically said it all to me. They were talking to their base. Justin Trudeau was talking about the, the cities, uh, and then um, Mr. Shear came back and retorted with the fact that he wants to represent hunters and fishers and outdoorsmen and all that kind of stuff. Um, Look, look, this is this is cynicism. It, 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 it's regardless. I mean, they've known about this problem. He mentioned 2013 in there. The, there was an uptick in 2014, an uptick in 2015, and there's been an uptick every single year since Trudeau has been in power. What is he doing now? He's waiting until the election of 2019 to, to announce it. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a, it's a little gross. The other thing too, I mean, Bill Blair has been trotted out to to defend this kind of stuff. Bill Blair himself said in 2018, summer last year, that upwards of 70 percent of Toronto's gun crime uh, is committed with guns that come in from the United States. Um, the fact of the matter is, and this is this goes against what the Liberals are saying, and, and what Andrew Shear uh, goes for what Mr. Shear is saying, is that we have a very porous border uh, where it is easy to transport weapons. And let's be honest, there's states in in the United States where you know you can get a handgun if you are 21 years old and have a pulse. Uh, and we are slave to that, unfortunately. To be fair, I, I would just point out that they, the Liberals have put some money into uh, into the border, uh, specifically targeted at that. We don't, the problem sure. is, uh, and Andrea, I'll give you the last word here, the, the problem is that uh, the data reflecting some of the claims that Mr. Blair this and other people it. have made is is absent, really. Like, that that's what part of their strategy was supposed to be, but it's really hard to ascertain exactly how much uh, you know, how many guns are illegal, mm -hmm. where they came from. Like, there's not a, a central place you can go in this country to, uh, with authority, say, here is what the stats are, and therefore these solutions will or won't work. That's Andre, your la last point to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, well, the, um, okay, so when we uh, have conversations about uh, gun crime in Toronto, for example, which we have every single year, even though the long-term uh, trends in Toronto is that uh, violent crime is pretty much on on the uh, on the decline. Um, we we don't have access to that those statistics. We don't have access to the information. We don't know who the perpetrators are. When they talk about, for example, like there's an outbreak of gang violence, do we know who those gangs are? Do we, yeah. like we we don't have that information. We just have to take the uh, the word of public officials for it. So, I I, I just I don't really see how. Um, this can be seen as anything other than trying to change the page uh, politically from the news that it's been having over the last couple of days. Uh, there has been no like uh, consultations with local communities. There's been no you know uh, political will built up. There was no build up to this whatsoever. It just seems to be coming out of thin air. Dropping. So, yeah, oh. unfortunately, I'm I'm not really that optimistic about it. He did say that they plan. I, I asked Mr. Yeah. Blair if, if this was about that, and he claimed that they were. I think um, it was coming down the road yeah. either way. They did yeah. do consultations, as you mentioned, and it is something they have been hinting at for, for a long time, so it's not completely out of thin air. But I think it's also correct to say that maybe today was chosen a tiny bit because yeah. they were hoping to talk about something else. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.